This lecture will deal with uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, this uh, state that was set up <coughs> as a result and after the, the peace, the date on the uh, peace agreement in 1995. And what we will do is we will focus on mostly on how the state and the political system are structured and set up. <coughs> Part of the same uh, inquiry or question of how can you set up stable and functioning a stable and functioning state or a stable and functioning political system in a <coughs> multi-ethnic society, but more, more than that, in a post-war multi-ethnic society. Remember Bosnia and Herzegovina, right? Is uh, the area where the worst bloodshed since World War II happened in Europe. So it's not just a multi-ethnic society. It is a multi-ethnic society that has attempted ethnic cleansing, that has attempted to solve the multi-ethnic problem through ethnic cleansing. Right? So, <coughs> that failed to a degree, on the other hand, to a degree, it was successful because it kind of resettled people, although many have gone back. <coughs> but if, okay, let's say it failed because it ended with a peace treaty and so on. Um, in, um, so, remember the other possible solutions to such multi ethnic societies that we have discussed. So, <coughs> obviously, the only other one that secession is not feasible, right? They try secession through. Uh, violent means, but it's not feasible because the ethnic cost, uh, composition of the Bosnia and Herzegovina is not uniform, it's not, you know, they're not lumped in distinct groups and so on, we'll talk about that. Um, so, so what, uh, uh, what remains, right? And uh, the, the path that will be, you know, followed will be that of um, uh, self-governance, right? Of either, of true, true representation. Uh, cultural rights, representation, uh, local uh, government, and so on, right? In, uh, which we saw that works in Romania, for example. Um, secession doesn't work, this, this uh, uh, let's say, does this work? So basically the, the Dayton Peace Treaty uh, it attempted to set up <coughs> a structure that, that would, well, end the war first of all, right? And then create one state but remember, you're creating one state in a land where the component, the major component of ethnic groups, because these are not the only ethnic groups, of course, because it's not just three groups. We, um, so in which the three major ethnic groups have been, uh, you know, in violent armed conflict. So how do you do that? So in this lecture, we will focus on how does it look today as an example of, of such an attempt, and we'll see some of the problems that it features. But it, it's a good... Uh, you know, again, just like in the Austro-Hungarian Empire, an attempt to create a stable functioning state in a multi-ethnic society in the age of the nation-state. That's the problem here, right? Because since the beginning of the world, all societies have been multi-ethnic, multi-religious, multi-whatever. Well, most of them, unless they were city-states. And even there, Athens, ancient Athens, the, the city-state had... Um, had, uh, uh, you know, just apart for citizens, and those were actually blood uh, related by blood. Uh, uh, so basically, there were ten clans, ten blood line related, bloodline defined uh, clans that formed the citizens of Athens. It wasn't a civic citizenship, it was a genetic citizenship. And there were many other people who lived in Athens, but they were not citizens. And I'm not even talking about slaves, which was a whole different uh, situation. Right? So, since the beginning of the world, right, this is the world, this is how the world exists, you know, multi-ethnic, multi-whatever. But the, is this, it is this new idea that each state belongs to one nation, but how do you define that nation? If you define it ethnically, then what happens? And even if you don't define it ethnically, we no, notice that, I mean, even states that do not define themselves ethnically, but civically, uh, like the United States or Canada or France, <coughs> especially United States or France, there is a strong cultural element because I don't see any politicians speaking Spanish, right? There is an expectation that they would that they would correspond to certain culture. So you know things even in the states that are said, said, you know civic based, you know politically politically defined nations, it, there is a cultural element as well. Let alone there where the nation is defined ethnically, where the nation is defined ethnically. Right? And that's the situation in the, most of the world, but specifically in Central and Eastern Europe. So, multi-ethnic societies, how do we define, how do we draw a solution to this? 
So what was what is the what, what was the solution? What is the setup? The uh, country that we call Bosnia and Herzegovina actually is so the state of Bosnia and Herzegovina, right? Is actually you would uh, if you would guess that it's a federal state, it would be a good guess. But it's actually something between federal and confederal. It is something between federal and confederal. Some would argue it is more confederal than it is federal. If you don't know what those means, that's that's too sad because we have discussed and defined. There's a video lecture on, and there are chapters, uh, the scan chapters about unitary, federal, and confederal. Well, um, the Bosnia and Herzegovina is, is somewhere between federal and confederal. Uh, the two major element components of the of Bosnia and Herzegovina as a as a state. So now we're talking the, about Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, there are two major entities that compose it. One is the Federation, uh, so the Federation of, so the Bosnian Croats Federation. And that is one of the parts of Bosnia and Herzegovina. This is the blue. This is called the Bosnian Croats Federation, and it is one of the entities part of Bosnia and Herzegovina. The other entity of Bosnia and Herzegovina is the um, Serbian Republic. Or Republika Srpska. But if you say Serbian Republic, it's fine. But of course, it is not the Republic of Serbia, right? which is a different country, right? Serbia is here. So this is why they refer to it as Republika Srpska, right? To uh, 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 the Republic, right? As part of the of the of the uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina. So this is Bosnia and Herzegovina. This blue here is the Bosnian Croat Federation within the Bosnian Herzegovina, right? And this is the Republika Srpska, also the other part of Bosnia Herzegovina. Okay? That is Bosnia Herzegovina. Right? And now we're going to examine how govern how do you govern this this interesting entity. This interesting entity. And as a whole, it is a federal slash confederal uh, uh, entity. Well, let's look at, the, at how it is how it is governed. First of all, so the obviously, as you can guess, right, and based on the war, this entity, the Bosnian and Croat Federation, is its major ethnic groups are Bosnians and Croats, but there are also other ethnic groups, including a significant Serbian ethnic minority. Well, this part, this part, the Republika Srpska, the Serbian, the Republic part, uh, the majority obviously are Serbians, but not only. There are Croats and the Bosnians as th there as well. There are other ethnic minorities as well, including the Roma, which is, okay. um, So before we talk about, so that's 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 uh, that's uh, uh, the general uh, view. Furthermore, as you see, so here's a, here's another map, right? There is this is this is the. Bosnia and Croat Federation, and this is the Republika Srpska, right? And just the map indicates, I remember that part of the documentary which talked about how they drew this, this map with Milosevic at the table under copious drinking, uh, with copy, accompanied by copious drinking, and, and, and notice the, the, right? You know, the difficulty of drawing such, even so, right? It's a still mixed uh, composition. Uh, notice something, right? Uh, that why do you have different colors here? Because the federation, the Bosnian Croat Federation, this part itself is divided into smaller entities called cantons. Because uh, this, as you will see, this part itself works as a federation, while this part itself works as a unitary state. Let's we'll see that. Okay, so two entities, the Bosnian Croat Federation and the Republika Srpska, and a third entity, tiny one, small one, here, which is more visible on this map, here, which is the Brčko district. So it's basically two entities, but also this district, which belongs to neither or belongs to both entities, and if you remember the documentary, you remember there, there was this question of this district and basically they said that's not settled it today. Well, it still hasn't been settled. This is still, because it's such a mixed district, there isn't any dominance. Clearly in the federation part, 
there is a clear dominance of the Croats and Bosnians in terms of numbers, yet, while here of Serbians. But here it's so mixed that you could, they couldn't assign it to either one. So the agreement, the compromise was, let's not do it. That's the Birchko district plan. Attached to an interesting article about life in the Birchko district. Here you have a map of the ethnic distribution. And notice that obviously it doesn't overlap with this map, but it kind of gives you the sense of why this border. And again, this is percentages, so it's not all green, all red, all blue, but there are different nuance, nuances, as you see. But blue is Serbian, uh, green is uh, Bosniak, which is basically Muslim, right? Uh, 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 right? Muslim, Serbians, Orthodox, and Croats, Catholic. Right? I mean, that's what, that's what the, that's how you differentiate, that's how else. So you have, so you see the Serbian populated, notice that here you have majority Serbian part of the Bosniak Croat Federation as well. I have to see that the map doesn't completely follow, uh, but anyway, it gives you kind of a sense of how they're distributed. Okay, so all part of the fascinating story of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Okay, so keep this in mind, have this open, have this uh, as a reference um, while we discuss the, uh, uh, the arrangement of the, the, the how, how the whole state and the political system is set up. Well, before we get into the uh, concrete institutions of uh, Bosnia and um, uh, Herzegovina, both at, at, at the national level, so to speak, and at the level of the entities, um, let's, uh, the central level, basically, and entities, we need to talk about a different institution, and that is the Office of the High Representative, OHR, which is still one of the most important entities in uh, the level of Bosnia and Herzegovina. So if we were to draw it, we would put this here as the office of the high representative. Let's put it here uh, as the office of the high representative. And who is this? This is the international community's delegate, the delegate of the international community uh, to, to Bosnia and Herzegovina. This is that representative of the UN, NATO, and whatever at the level of, uh, in Bosnia who makes sure that they don't fight. Yeah? Who has established uh, after you know the war so that uh, you know uh, and actually in the first I don't know ten years after the war, after data after 1985, the government was mostly done through or maybe the first five, six, seven years, government was mostly done by the international community there because you know you had a post-war situation the main po point was to keep peace in fact the whole structure is set up so that there's peace and not war so the office of the high representative um, for a long while had a sort of a veto power over internal politics and it can still intervene when things completely break down uh, because all these institutions that were set up for the, in the first few years they didn't really work so it took a while for them to, to work. So the Office of the High Representative, again, uh, with a deputy in charge of with Butchko District. Okay, uh, which is, who, who is helped by the Policy Implementation Council? PIC. Uh, excuse me, Peace Implementation Council. And there's a link on Canvas for this. Who are the, who is made by 50-something representative of all the involved parties? And this is the, again, the delegate, these are the delegates basically of the international <coughs> community who used to be also helped by a significant military force the, uh, which had many S4, I4, whatever, they had many names, U4, um, which has decreased, uh, you know, uh, significantly since then. Uh, which you know started with being in charge with uh, you know keeping peace and, and police and everything else because obviously you didn't could have local armed forces which were you know basically at war so after the peace in order to enforce peace you had a significant military presence by the international community that has dwindled in time but anyway there's still uh, an OHR they try to shut it down the the, the peace implementation council which is kind of the dele delegation of the international community has tried to shut down the office of the high representatives in about seven years ago, and actually it was the local population that 
that, that kind of revolted and said, no, no, we're not sure it's going to work if you leave. So anyway, it's kind of there to guarantee uh, that, that, that the system stays in place, that there is no you know, uh, reignit reigniting of, of war. Um, also, there is an important, and I mentioned that I put a, a link there, uh, there is an important EU special representative, so EU representative also there, who for a while it was the same person actually, but now it's separate. Um, so the, the EU has its own representative. The EU has kind of taken over, to a good degree, the, the presence of the international community there. Um, mostly also because the, the Bosnia and Herzegovina, just like all the countries in Central East Europe, that are not yet part of the European Union, many are, as you know, um, they all want to become a part of the European Union. And that's, uh, so the European Union has a, an important tool to leverage and to stimulate, and I posted an article about that as well, to stimulate reforms in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Remember that during transition, this, um, this in, uh, enticement of EU membership, and of NATO membership, but the, uh, EU membership, because uh, it was more difficult, and more complicated um, was very important in, in, in giving a direction to the to the uh, Central Eastern European uh, states to continue and to push towards reforms because there was a clear timetable, there were clear goals, and there were also funds that were coming in to endeavor those transitions. But the same thing is going on in the countries that are not part of the European Union uh, of Central Eastern Europe, and those are actually the countries of former Yugoslavia and further to the east. Uh, Bosnia is not part. Um, uh, Serbia, Kosovo, Montenegro, Macedonia, Albania, obviously not part of the former Yugoslavia, but not part. These are the countries that are not part of, of uh, European Union from, from the region that we have studied. All the rest are part, right? Poland, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria, Slovenia, Croatia joined in 2013. All of these are part of the European Union. Not, so there is this pool of the European Union which is very important, so that they also play an important role here. So that's kind of the international community presence, but that's not the, uh, that is not the, um, uh, you know, the, the structure of the state which we will examine in the second part of the video.